Okay, this is the notes for sections 1, 2. Uh, entitled the sections relations and functions. At this time you should have read section 1, 2. You'll notice that in section 1, 2 that there's quite a bit of vocabulary, just like uh, section 1, 1. I just want to highlight a few of them and make sure you get this down in your notes as well. First of all, we have a relation. Anytime you have a set of ordered pairs or anytime you have two numbers that are paired together, we say that that's a relation. Okay. So like like a relationship. Those two numbers are somehow related to each other. Okay. Next term is is got one of the most important terms that we're going to learn in this chapter, and that's function. And I'm going to give you two different definitions of it. They mean the same thing, just different ways of stating it. The first is a function is a set of ordered pairs x, y, in which each first component x of a pair is paired with exactly one second component of y. In other words, when you look at a function, the x value can only be paired with one y value. So you can have, in, in if you look at a set of ordered pairs, you could have one of your ordered pairs could be 1, 2. But if that's the case, you cannot have any other ordered pairs with 1 as the x-coordinate. 1 can only be paired with 2 if it's part of that function. So the y value can repeat, but the x value cannot repeat. A second definition of a function is a relation in which no two ordered pairs have the same first component x. So that's what I was kind of getting at as, was, as we were looking at uh, number 1 there. And that is, if it's a function, the first coordinate or the x values or the first, um, excuse me, the first um, component of the ordered pair, the x values, cannot repeat. Okay. A couple other terms: dependent variable and independent variable. Uh, when we have a function, we're going to have two variables. The dependent variable is a variable whose value always depends on the value or values of other variables. And the independent variable is a variable upon whose value other variables depend. Okay. So if I have something, for instance, uh, y equals 3x plus 5, the value of y is dependent upon what the value of x is. Okay. And that's what it means for it to be dependent. So therefore, in that scenario, y would be dependent. Uh, an independent variable is the exact opposite that, of that. The independent variable is a variable, variable upon whose value other variables depend on. So in my scenario, x then would be the independent variable. When you think about dependent, the dependent is also the output. Uh, so the, if you think about what a function is, the dependent variable or the output variable is a function of the in independent variable or the input variable. Okay? So a lot of times we'll say y is a function of x. But it's always the dependent is a function of the independent. Okay, so here's a couple examples I'd like to take a look at. Number one says two angles of an isosceles triangle have the same measure x. The measure of the third angle is y. This relationship can be modeled with the equation y equals 180 minus 2x. So I've got that circled here. Which, which of x or y is the dependent variable and which is the independent variable? I'll explain your answer. Okay, so as I look at that, I'm asking myself the question, which one depends upon the other one? And as you look at the equation, y, the value of y, depends on what x is. As x changes, y is going to change. So we say that y is the dependent variable, and therefore x is the independent variable. x is the variable that y depends upon, therefore x is independent. Okay, so we can say that y is... Uh, for each value of x, there's exactly one value of y. No matter what value I put in for x, there's going to be that exact same y value will always come out. So for instance, if I put 2 in for x, no matter who does it, if they do the math behind it correctly, no matter what, if x is 2, y is going to be 176, 180 minus 4. 
So um, this is a function where x is independent and y is dependent. Okay. Let's take a look at number two. It says the average annual price P of crude oil per barrel in the year Y is given by the following table. Is Y a function of P? Why or why not? And then part B is, is P a function of Y? Why or why not? Okay. Well, here's what we want to think about when we're asking that question. When we look at it in kind of that table form is when is, you know, how can I determine whether or not that's a function? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the table and I'm going to look to see if something repeats. Okay? Well, if I look at my Y values, they do not repeat. They are all unique, which means that Y certainly can be the independent variable. However, if I look at P and I look at that, it does repeat. It, it has two 1675s here. Therefore, it cannot be the independent variable. Okay, so now, so I know that y has to be the independent variable. Therefore, p would have to be the dependent variable. So if I look at part a, it says, is y a function of p? Remember, it's dependent is a function of independent. Well, I know that this has to be this has to be my dependent variable, and this has to be my independent variable because these do not repeat and these do repeat. Therefore, is y a function of p? The answer to that is no, because each value of p does not have one value of y paired with it. Okay, 1675 is paired with 1993, and it's paired with 1995, therefore it cannot be the independent variable. Okay. However, if I turn that around and say, is p a function of y? The answer to that is yes. Because as I look at my table now, all of the values that are in this, this column are unique. Therefore, there's no repeats. Therefore, it can be a function. So the answer here is yes, because y has a unique value of p paired with it. Okay? Y does not repeat. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message.